It's the kind of day that presidential history geeks dream about. Today, the Nixon Presidential Library made public about 280,000 pages of new material. We bow to you, disclosure gods. Today's document dump included a Nixon memo ordering that Kennedy-era modern art be purged from American embassies around the world. President Nixon called the art, and I quote, the uglies. There's also a handwritten note suggesting that G. Gordon Liddy, misspelled, uh, be hired for a project that later became the Watergate break-in. But the nugget that caught our eye uh, it was a story that historians have known about for years, but which often gets overshadowed by Watergate, its vastly bigger and more historically important cousin. It's something called Chapman's Friend. Chapman's Friend was the code name for a spy the Nixon campaign planted among the journalists covering his Democratic rivals on the campaign trail. Chapman's friend worked undercover in the press corps covering the Hubert Humphrey campaign in 1968 and the George McGovern campaign in 1972. The mission of Chapman's friend was to look for signs of trouble on the campaigns and to gather any gossip and to report it back to a political consultant at the Nixon campaign. Who was Chapman's friend? Who was the spy? There were actually two of them. The first was a reporter named Seymour Frieden. He later claimed he was doing it while writing a book about the campaign, though he never managed to get a book out of it. The second L Chapman's friend uh, was Lucien Goldberg. Yes, that Lucien Goldberg, confidant of Linda Tripp, Monica Lewinsky's frenemy. Ms. Goldberg may have begun her career in underhanded shenanigans for Richard Nixon, but she later became famous for encouraging Linda Tripp to record her phone conversations with Monica Lewinsky. Joining us now is John Dean, former Nixon White House counsel who testified against his boss in a Senate inquiry that eventually led to President Nixon's impeachment. He's also the author of Blind Ambition, which was just recently reissued. Uh, John Dean, thank you so much for being here. It's great to have you on the show. Thank you, Rachel. You were in the White House uh, when some of this was going on. Did you know at the time about Chapman's friend? Didn't know about Chapman's friend. Learned about that much later. Uh, I don't know who Mr. Chapman or Miss Chapman might have been. Uh, I do know, of course, that you reported the two friends uh, who filled that task. They worked for Murray Chotner, who was a, uh, a sometimes aide at the White House and a longtime mentor of Richard Nixon. He goes back to his very first campaign, a lawyer. Uh, and he, he always claimed that Chapman's friend was a totally legal operation, and I, I think it really probably was. Totally legal or totally illegal? No, legal. legal. I, I, I don't think there's anything. I don't think there's anything improper uh, in having somebody follow wearing with press credentials or claim press credentials another's campaign. I think it's probably a rather common trait. Uh, I think if we'd have stopped at that level, uh, that uh, history would have been much different. Uh, when you look at uh, Gordon Liddy uh, and his activities, as opposed to Chapman's friend, we're in very different leagues. I understand that um, in addition to the Humphrey campaign and McGovern campaign spying, uh, one of the things that comes up in the documents that we've seen today is the Nixon campaign keeping a very, very, very close eye on Senator Ted Kennedy, essentially tailing him. Uh, what can you tell us about that? Yeah, that uh, when I uh, when I got to the White House, I slowly learned that this had been in place since the Chappaquiddick incident uh, that Kennedy was involved in, and the Nixon people had thought it very important to get all these facts out, since they believed that uh, Edward Kennedy was the most threatening potential opponent that Nixon might face in '72. So they actually had an, an investigator there who posed again as a journalist, asked all the embarrassing questions at press conferences. He was actually a, a former New York City detective uh, who knew his way around these sort of things and was able to dig up an awful lot of information. And after that, it, it, it continued. And uh, the, the, doc, the document I saw today is when they wanted to increase it to, seven, uh, to 24 hours a day, almost constant coverage of Kennedy. Uh, I happened to shoot that down, Rachel. I thought it was absurd. Uh, the, the whole... Kennedy covering had had really uh, uh, faltered under my my tutelage when uh, they and asked me for uh, my thoughts and I just thought it was insane and fortunately the man who was doing it thought it was insane too so it finally did dwindle down to nothing and there was very little coverage at the end was the reason that you thought it was insane because there was a risk of getting caught or because there was not going to be anything useful that would come out of it that would justify even minimal risk. 
I think it was all those things. The few reports I had been shown, uh, and I've since looked at them in the aftermath of Watergate, they really are just gossip. They're, they're speculative. They didn't have any hard information. In fact, Kennedy was behaving himself, and they were very distressed about that. Uh, that comes up on a couple of the tapes, uh, that they're not very happy with the results they're getting, that he's being a good boy. So uh, I, I just thought, one, there was a high likelihood that somebody could get caught doing this. Two, it would take an awful lot of, of time talent to do it. Uh, I did get wind later that there was a plan when I had sort of shot it down to, to get the Secret Service to go up and provide protection to Kennedy and use that as a spying technique. But Kennedy was smart enough to turn down the president's invitation to provide some protection for him. John Dean, former White House legal counsel to President Nixon, it's always great to have you on the show. Thanks, John.